Prime numbers are those numbers which have exactly two factors. And those two factors are 1 and the number itself. So 13 is a prime number because the only factors that 13 has are 1 and 13 itself. Composite numbers, on the other hand, are natural numbers that have more than two factors. Let's go through the natural numbers and see whether they are composite or prime or something else. We'll start right at the beginning with 1. Let's list the factors of 1. Well, that's not very hard to do because the only factor one is one has is 1. All right, does it fulfill either of these definitions? It doesn't have exactly two factors, and it doesn't have more than two factors. So in fact, 1 is neither prime nor composite, and it's the only number that falls into that category. Let's go to the next number, 2. What are the factors of 2? Well, if we go and find our factors of 2, we'll see that 2 has only got the factors 1 and 2. It has exactly two factors, 1 and itself. And this tells us immediately that what we're dealing with here is a prime number. 3. What are the factors of 3? 1 and 3. Again, situation of exactly two factors, one and itself, which tells us that we're dealing with a prime number. What about four? Well, it's got one and it's got four as factors, but if we try, we'll see that its next number, two, can divide into four, so two is a factor. We don't have to do any more work to tell us that we are in a situation where there are more than two factors, so that tells us that this thing is composite. Number like five, well, if we go and find its factors, one is a factor, and obviously its partner is five, two doesn't go in, three doesn't go in, four doesn't go in, so the only factors it has are one and itself, which tells us we are in the situation of a prime number. What about 6? Well, we know it has factors 1 and 6. It also has 2 as a factor with its partner of 3. We're in a situation of more than 2 factors, which tells us that we are dealing with a composite number. And we can go on and look at 7. And it has factors of 1 and 7. 2 doesn't go in, 3 doesn't go in, 4 doesn't go in. 5 doesn't go in, 6 doesn't go in, so the only factors it has are 1 and 7, which tells us we are situated in this, we are in the situation of having a prime number. And we can keep on doing that for any single number. What we have to do is have a look at its factors. If it only has two factors, then you know that you've got a prime number. If it has more than two factors, then you know that you're dealing with a composite number. Easy. But what if someone actually came at me and asked, oh, here we go, what about a quite a big number like, um, is 98 prime or composite or whatever, right? And I need to answer that. Well, what I need to do is check, does 98 have any factors other than 1 and itself? And luckily, this is really easy because I can see straight away 98 is an even number. It has 2 as a factor, so it means that it doesn't only have 1 and itself as factors. It might have a whole lot more, but it definitely has 2 as a factor. So I can answer, no, it has 2 as a factor. So that's nice and easy. But what if they asked something that wasn't about an even number? What if they asked, is 97 prime? Now this is a little more difficult, because I can't immediately think of something that divides into 97. But I actually need to be sure, so I need to go and check. I need to check. 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10, then 11, then 12, then 8. And it's going to take me an awfully long time because I've got to check all numbers all the way through to 97. 
I can do something to make it a little quicker than that. I just want to explain what I can do to make it quicker. And to do that, I'm just going to jump to the side a little bit and remind you about something about factors, which will help us cut down on how much we have to check for this. So let's have a look. What I need to do is remind us something about factors. Let's use 24 as an example and just remind ourselves that when we were looking at the factors of 24, we went 1 came with its partner of 24, 2 with its partner of 12, 3 with its partner of 8, 4 with its partner of 6, 5, doesn't go in and then six we don't actually have to bother with because it's already there in the list of factors. Can you see that in our list of factors we've got small factors that partner with bigger numbers and this is going to help us in knowing what where to stop in checking for the primes because every small factor has a big factor partner. And I'm going to say we only need to check through the smaller factors, the smaller numbers, because if we don't find a factor in the smaller numbers, there can't be a factor in the bigger numbers because it would have had a partner already. So how do I decide where the smaller numbers start and the bigger numbers start, you know, smaller numbers stop and the bigger numbers start? Well, what I can notice here is if I take any of these smaller factors and multiply them by themselves, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, I will get numbers that are smaller than 24. 4 times 4 is 16. That's smaller than 24. But if I take any of the bigger numbers and I multiply it by itself, 6 times 6, I get 36, which is bigger than 24. And this tells me when I'm checking if a number is prime, I only have to check all the smaller numbers. In other words, the numbers that when I multiply them by themselves end up being less. Let's go through that with 97 and you'll see what I mean. Right, so we're going back to our question. Let me get a pen. Is 97 prime? And we literally have to go and check the numbers and see if they divide in. All right, 1 obviously does, but that's not important because 1 and 97 are going to be factors of 97. What we're checking is, are there any other ones? Well, does 2 go in? No, of course not, because 97 is not an even number. Does 3 go in? No, it doesn't. If I take 3 into 9, it goes 3 times, but 3 doesn't go into 7, so it doesn't go in. Does 4 go in? Well, no, it doesn't, because 97 isn't even, so 4 can't go in. Does 5 go in? No, no, no. You know how the 5 times table works. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, right? Everything ends in a 5 or a 0, so 5 doesn't go in. Does 6 go in? Well, again, it can't, because... It would have to be even for it to go in. Does 7 go in? Well, let's check. 7 into 97. 7 goes into 9 once, remainder 2. 7 goes into 27. It goes in 3 times, but it has a remainder of 6. So no, 7 doesn't go in. All right, I've checked a lot already. Have I checked enough? Well, let's just check. 7 times 7 is 49. I'm still in the small numbers because I'm below 97. So I have to keep going. 8, well, I know 8 won't go in because 97 is not an even number. What about 9? No, it won't go in if I try and do the division. 10, definitely not. Do I have to keep going? Let's just check where I am. If I took 9 and multiplied it by 9, I'd get 81. That's smaller than 97, so I did have to keep going. If I take 10 and multiply it by 10, I get 100, and that's bigger than 97. So anything from here on, I'm going to be in the bigger numbers. 
And remember how he looked at factors. Any big factor would have had a small factor partner. And I've checked all the possible small factors. So I can stop here. I don't have to keep on going. And I can say, all right, 97 is a prime number because I haven't found any factors other than 1 and itself. Another example uh, is, oops, get a pen, is 119 a prime number? Okay. I have to go, right? 1, obviously, and 199 are factors, 119 are factors, but that's, you know, not important. We've got to check the rest. We want to see if there's any other factors. 2, no, definitely not, because 119 is not even. 3, does 3 go in? Well, 3 goes into 11 3 times, remainder 2, 3 doesn't go into 29. So, nope, it doesn't. 4 won't go in because 119 is not even. 5 won't go in because we know 5, 10, 15, 20, it has to end in a 5 or a 0. 6 won't go in because it's not even. 119 isn't even. 7, let's check that one. 7 goes into 11 once, and 7 goes into 49 7 times. And so 7 goes along with a partner factor of 17. 119 is not prime because it has a factor of 7 and, of course, another factor of 17. Let's do one last little example. Um, let's answer the question, is 19 prime? Well, this is not a too bad one to check, but let's just use it to practice where we can stop checking. We know, of course, that 1 and 19 are factors. We've got to check the rest. Is 2 a factor? Well, obviously not, because 19 is not even. Is 3 a factor? Well, no, 3 doesn't go into 19. And if we check, 3 times 3 is 9, so we haven't gone far enough. We're still in the small numbers. What about 4? Does 4 go into 19? No, it doesn't. 4 times 4 is 16, so we're still in the small, so we have to keep checking. What about 5? Does 5 go into 19? We know it doesn't. What's 5 times 5? It's 25. 25 is bigger than our 19, so we've suddenly gone into the bigger numbers. We've gone past our halfway point, so we no longer have to check anything more, and we can conclude that, yes, 19 is prime. It won't have any other factors, because any bigger factor would have had a smaller factor partner, and we've checked all the smaller factors.